Hello everyone and welcome back to the Greener Side Language Academy. Last time we took a look at the CSEC Spanish Oral Exam, Paper 3, and we were looking at the guided conversation specifically under the topic Daily Routine. To watch that video, you can click on the info card in the top right corner of this video. So just go ahead and click that if you have not yet watched it. Now, if you have already watched that video, let's take a look at some questions under the topic travel. Now, I know this is a topic that is somewhat problematic for a lot of students because it involves um, the use of different tenses that maybe we're not so comfortable with as well as um, knowledge of specialized vocabulary so that's why i've skipped ahead to this particular topic practiquemos so i have separated these questions into three different categories because we can talk about travel in so many different ways so the first category I've, I've decided to put is en la calle, on the road or in the streets. So here's the first question. ¿Cuál es el medio de transporte que usas más? This question means, what's the means of transport that you use the most? An alternative to this question would be, ¿Cómo vas a la escuela todos los días? O como viajas o llegas a la escuela todos los días. And all of these versions of the same question basically translate to how do you get to school every day. So both questions, both the one in pink at the top and the one in black, are asking you to talk about the means of transport that you use on a regular basis. So you could answer by saying, normalmente viajo, and then what's at the bottom? Viajo en carro, en coche, en autobús, en tren, or any of the others. Or you could say viajo a pie, because remember you say a pie to say by foot, and not en pie. En pie is incorrect, so keep that in mind. And if it's a question having to do with um, traveling to school, you could start by saying, Para llegar a la escuela, viajo, and then of course one of the possibilities down below, viajo en autobús, en tren, en barco, en bicicleta, or viajo a pie. Alright. Another question is, ¿cuántas veces tomas el autobús al día? Now this is a very specific question and it's asking how many times you take the bus every day or per day. Now, you could respond by saying simply, Tomo el autobús, you give a number, and then veces al día. So, por ejemplo, for example, you could say, Tomo el autobús dos veces al día. All right. And if you'd like to, you could expound by saying, Tomo el autobús para llegar a la escuela y para volver a la casa. So, to get to school and to go back home. Next question is, ¿Hay muchos accidentes de tráfico en tu país? Explica. Now, for those of you, <laughs> this is a very, very um, pertinent question for persons who live in many parts of the Caribbean, especially Jamaica. And so, there's a lot to talk about here. So, a possible response could be, you could start out by saying, Si, sí, en mi país hay muchos accidentes de tráfico. Right? So, first, you'd want to answer the question. Then, you explain. So, you've answered the question by saying, yes, in my country, there are many um, traffic accidents. And then, you can give a reason. Okay? So, you could say, la gente conduce demasiado rápido. People drive too fast. La gente no obedece las leyes de tránsito. People don't obey traffic laws. And los caminos son muy sinuosos y peligrosos. The roads are very windy and dangerous. So these are all very valid reasons for, you know, a country having many traffic accidents. But if it's you know, if it's not true that your, country's, your country um, has a lot of accidents, you answer negatively by saying no. 
en mi país no hay muchos accidentes de tráfico. And you could give a reason. La gente conduce a una velocidad apropiada. People drive at an appropriate speed. La gente obedece las leyes de tránsito. People obey traffic laws. And los caminos son muy derechos y seguros. The roads are very straight and safe. What about this question? ¿Qué se puede hacer para evitar los accidentes de tráfico? What can be done to avoid traffic accidents or road accidents? So notice the se puede. Se puede in this, in this, can, in this case would literally mean what can one do? So what can one do? Literally, like in a general sense so sometimes se is used before the third person singular of a verb to generalize the action so what can one do or what can people do in general all right so it's generalizing the whole um verb so of course you want to respond in a general way not necessarily attaching the action to a person But, you know, you could even use that the se with another verb. All right, let's look at a possible response. Para evitar los accidentes de tráfico. So notice how I'm using back sometimes a part of the question to answer it. So that my answer is um, complete. Now, it's not always necessary to do that. Um, but if it's a case where the rest of your answer could not form a complete sentence, I would recommend that you kind of bring back some parts of the question. So, para evitar. So, let's go back. Notice that the question is asking, ¿Qué se puede hacer para evitar los accidentes de tráfico? So, it's asking you, what can you do to avoid traffic accidents? So, you can say, to avoid traffic accidents, para evitar los accidentes de tráfico, right? You give your um, solutions. Hay que conducir a la velocidad recomendada. Um, one needs to. Hay que means like one needs to or um, it is necessary to. So it's a general expression. Hay que. So it's necessary to drive at the recommended speed. Es necesario obedecer las leyes de tránsito. It's necessary to obey traffic laws. And here's another way to, to another general expression, se debe. So, se debe means one must or one should do something. So, se debe estar alerta a todos los momentos mientras se conduce. So, notice the se conduce again. To make the expression general, we're going to use se before the verb and put the verb in the third person singular form, meaning the LA form. So, that last sentence means one must be alert at all times while one is driving, basically. All right. So, if you need to pause the video, do that and, you know, kind of mull over these possible answers and even try to formulate your personal answers. That would be more to your liking. Next question is, ¿Te gusta conducir? Or, ¿Te gustaría conducir? ¿Por qué? So the difference between te gusta and te gustaría is that one is a reality and one is a hypothetical situation, a possibility. So te gusta conducir means do you like to drive, whereas te gustaría conducir means would you like to drive. Now, of course, you can tell the difference between do you and would you. If it's do you like to drive, it means, okay, it's something that you do. And it's something that, you know, is already a reality. You drive. So do you like it? But if it's te gustaría, it's something that is not yet a reality, but could become a reality. So would you like to drive one day in the future? You know? All right. So, and then another, an alternative for that question would be te gustaría montar en bicicleta. ¿Por qué? En motocicleta, my bad. But bicicleta could also come on the exam. So it's asking, that one would be asking if you like to ride a motorcycle. Or if it's bicicleta, a bicycle. Alright? So your answer could be either positive or negative. Once more, this is a yes-no question. Si, 
me gusta conducir o me gustaría conducir porque es bastante conveniente y práctico. It is quite convenient and practical. Okay? So talking about a car this time, you could say also, porque vivo muy lejos y necesito tener un carro para desplazarme. All right, remember these are just possibilities and I'm giving you the best case scenarios so that you can have, you know, something to work with. So I live very far and I need a car to get around. That's what desplazarse means, to get around, to move around, to travel around. So of course, desplazarme, because you're speaking for yourself, yo necesito desplazarme. Then the last um, possibility, no me gusta usar el transporte público. So I would like to drive or I like to drive because I don't like to use public transport. A lot of persons can relate to that. All right. What about if you don't like to drive or you would not like to drive? No, no me gusta conducir or no me gustaría conducir porque no es fácil ni ecológico. It is neither easy nor environmentally friendly, all right? Or some persons would say ecological. Or it is too expensive and dangerous. Está más demasiado caro y peligroso, all right? Another possibility. Vivo en una ciudad donde hay mucho tráfico. All right, so first of all, you'd have to say, you know, no, no me gusta porque... You know, you have to, of course, answer the question and then give your reason after you say por qué, right? Um, prefiero usar el transporte público. I prefer to use public transport. Some persons do. I mean, people have different um, preferences, so that's a possibility. What about this category now? So we've looked at en la calle you know situations that have to do with travel you know in the streets on the road what about en tu propio país so this could still be on the road but more in a general sense a countrywide or island-wide if you live on an island perspective all right so here's a question that you might be asked it's very uncommon but you know some uncommon questions tend to come up como es la geografía de tu país or, ¿qué aspecto de la geografía de tu país te gusta más? So, both these questions are asking about the geography of your country. And notice pronunciation, geografía. Why? Because when G comes before an I or an E, it is soft, pronounced ha. Okay? So, what could you respond about the geography of your country? Well, your country could be flat, mountainous, it could be an island, it could be a part of a continent, it could be, could have many rivers, all sorts of things. So let's look at how to say that. Mi país es una isla o es parte de un continente. Or mi país es montañoso. For example, if you're living in Dominica or St. Vincent or Jamaica, you know, but you could also say mi país es plano if you're living in like a Barbados or a Belize, you know, flat countries with, you know, very few mountain mountains or, or highlands. Um, you could also say mi país tiene muchos ríos y muchas playas bonitas. So the ríos could be for um, the Guyanese students watching out there. Your country has a lot of rivers. Um, and, you know, Playas Bonitas could be basically any of the islands out there in the Caribbean. All right. How about this one? Describe un lugar de interés para los turistas en tu país. Now, this would require you knowing a bit about, you know, the, the interesting sites in your country. So some general knowledge is required here. You could name any site of interest in your country, right? By saying, un lugar de interés o un sitio, I didn't write that one, but un sitio de interés en mi país es, and then you give what that, um, the name of that um, site of interest is, 
and then you know you could give a reason it's, it never hurts to give a reason if possible right because more than likely the examiner will ask you por qué so you could say es and then give an adjective or tiene muchos something it could be tiene muchas atracciones it could be hay muchos i don't know muchos artefactos históricos it could be anything muchas tiendas muchos mercados it could be anything so you just have to dig deep into your dictionary to find exactly what you want to say for that one so that's an open one that i've left open for you and feel free to comment down below what you have put for your response for this one I'd love to hear about the different sites of interest in your countries across the Caribbean. Alright, so here's another one. ¿Quisieras ir a algún lugar durante tus vacaciones? ¿A dónde? Hmm. So would you like to go somewhere during your vacations or over your vacation time? Over the holiday? To where exactly? Right? So you could respond using the same tense that's there. That's really the um, imperfect subjunctive, but the function of it is it's functioning as the conditional, meaning I would, right? So, si yo quisiera ir, yes, I would like to or I'd want to go to, and then you, of course, you give um, the name of the place. Um, could be within your country as well, usually. Porque es, and there's a host of adjectives down below that you can use. But of course, um, the list is not limited to those. If you can find other uh, more appropriate adjectives, you can do so as well. Now, this is, a, this is a type of question that you're very likely to see on the exam. These questions come up more often than not. Questions having to do with el extranjero. Um, foreign countries or abroad okay because usually when we talk about travel we talk about um, you know going abroad but we never know what's coming on the exam that's why we have to examine all of these categories so let's delve right in te gusta viajar por qué do you like to travel why Here's another version of that question. Viajas mucho? Do you travel a lot? And then, of course, por qué? Here's a possible response or possible responses. Sí, me gusta viajar porque me apasionan las culturas extranjeras. Now, there are many ways to say that you like um, foreign cultures, but this is just one of the ways. This one literally means I am passionate about foreign cultures and notice that apasionan agrees with um, las culturas extranjeras because apasion, apasionar is like the verb gustar it operates in the same way the ob well i wouldn't say the object what we would think of the object um what we would think of as the object in in the way we say it in english that is what it would agree with so we would say I am passionate about, but in Spanish the way it's structured is these the um, foreign cultures. Um, I don't even know if there's a literal translation. It's almost like saying they make me passionate or something like that. But you know we don't try to translate literally. Just know that that's the way to say I'm passionate about. Me apasiona. The thing that follows is singular. Me apasionan if the thing that follows is plural. Another alternative, quisiera conocer a gente nueva. I would like to meet new people. Then the other one is, necesito mejorar mi español. So of course, if you say this one, um, it would be because you are you are going to a Spanish-speaking country. All right, so you'd say, of course, me gusta viajar. You probably could add me gusta viajar a países hispanos, meaning to Spanish-speaking countries. ¿Por qué necesito mejorar mi español? That's a possibility. ¿Viajan mucho tus padres o tus amigos? ¿Por qué? 
And your response would be, si, sí, viajan mucho. Or it could be negative, but let's look at the positive answer first. Si, sí, viajan mucho porque tienen que visitar a sus parientes. They have to visit their relatives. Okay? So, parientes means relatives. You could replace that with familias. So, sus familias, they need to visit their families. Or you could use the other word for relatives in Spanish, which is familiares. All right? And then we have necesitan trabajar, necesitan hacer negocios, o necesitan ir de compras. They need to work to do business or to go shopping. So remember this one related to your friends. This question was related to your friends or to your parents, right? So you would have to choose based on, you know, what you're asked about, whether it's your friends or your parents, okay? And your negative response could be, no, no viajan mucho. ¿Por qué? Les da miedo. So since we're talking about them, your parents or your friends, so that's a plural group, you would use the object pronoun les. Les da miedo, meaning it makes them afraid or it scares them. Okay? Some people don't like to travel because maybe the means of transport is scary. All right? Then there's this one, which, you know, we have to be cognizant of. Hay una pandemia y no se puede viajar. We're coming back with the se puede again. There's a pandemic and it's not possible or one cannot travel right now. All right. Or you could say prefieren quedarse en casa. They prefer to stay at home. ¿Por qué viaja la gente a países extranjeros? This question can get a bit too philosophical if we don't rein ourselves in. So the question is asking, why do people travel to foreign countries? All right, so come back down to earth. Think of practical reasons why people travel. So you could say, la gente viaja porque tienen que visitar a sus parientes. Right? So the same reasons we gave before. So you see, a lot of the times you can give a lot of the same reasons. You just have to adapt them to the situation. Alright, so para ir a un país extranjero, ¿cómo te gustaría viajar? To go to a foreign country, how would you like to travel? An alternative to this question is, ¿Qué clase de transporte se utiliza para viajar al extranjero? What type of transport is used to travel to you know, travel abroad or to, to foreign countries? Okay, so that one is more general. The, the second one, but you know, the one that's bigger, the question that's bigger and in pink, that question is more related to you because no it says, ¿Cómo te gustaría viajar? So, meaning that if you're asked the first question, you have to personalize it. Um, if you're asked the second question, notice they're using the impersonal se. So, that would be more of a general um, answer that you'd want to give. Not relating to anybody in particular, but just, you know, in general. So, you would start by saying, me gustaría viajar. And then you'd name the type of um, travel. En avión, en barco, en tren. Anything that you can use to travel abroad. So don't matter answer a pie or in bicicleta because you can't use either one of those to travel abroad unless you live on the border of a country. <laughs> right? But you know, if you live on an island, you cannot walk across the sea to the next island. Neither can you ride your bicycle across the sea. More realistically to travel to a different country, you need to go either by plane, by ship, or by train, depending on the... Of course, not for those who live in an island, but maybe for those who live on the mainland. ¿Qué te gusta hacer cuando viajas al extranjero? What do you like to do when you travel abroad? Or another possibility, ¿cuál es tu actividad favorita? Cuando visitas otro, pa otro país. So what's your favorite activity when you visit another country? Just the same question but in a different form. And of course, I'll leave this one open for the audience to, to try their hand at you know, giving a response. But you could start your response by saying, 
cuando viajo al extranjero, me gusta, and then you give the activity, of course, the verb that you use after me gusta would have to be in the infinitive. This one is a very tricky one. No. ¿Qué preparativos tienes que hacer para visitar a un país extranjero? I, it's not tricky because it's hard to answer. It's tricky because it's a long question. And long questions like this tend to be very um, daunting and intimidating. So what you have to do is just listen out for the keywords. Preparativos means preparations, right? So, tienes que, do you have to, hacer para visitar, so to visit, un país extranjero, a foreign country. Another, I won't even say form of this question, but another branch, you know, related to this question would be, ¿Qué necesitas para viajar al extranjero? What do you need to travel abroad? Or, ¿Qué documentos necesitas para viajar al extranjero? Which documents do you need? To travel abroad. Now to answer that first question now, para visitar, a, para visitar un país extranjero, tengo que, because the question asks, tienes que, what do you have to do? So tengo que, what are logical things you think of when preparing to go abroad? Let's really think now, people. Obtener un pasaporte y un visado. Get a passport and a visa, right? Think realistically. Sometimes I think you know it's just that um, on, in the moment, you know, you might forget vocabulary. So make sure you know this vocabulary. So even the strongest of nerves and nervous energy won't, you know, make you forget it. All right. Another thing is, tengo que hacer las maletas. Um, pack my suitcases. Y comprar los billetes o los boletos the avion and buy plane tickets take a minute to pause the video mull over this a little bit you know think of other possible responses and try to use this as you know some form of inspiration not even inspiration but just um as a basis you know to think of how you would respond to questions that are similar to this that might disappear on the exam and this one now, whew, another big question. ¿Qué información tienes que dar a la embajada extranjera cuando quieres visitar otro país? Ooh, so much words, so many words. Right? So, what information do you need to give to the foreign embassy when you want to visit another country? This is one of those questions that is... It usually is like the last one on the list, right? And if you answer this one, you know, it really shows that you, you, you definitely have a high level of comprehension, right? Let's look at some possible responses. Now, before I even go over, start thinking to yourself, what information do you need to give the foreign embassies when you want to go to their countries? And I want you also, if possible, to go over that um, section of the video where I read the question so that you can practice listening to it and hearing the words and putting a sound to the words that you read because remember in the exam you're not going to see the words you're just going to hear them so you need to practice from now hearing a, lo a long string of words and understanding the main idea of them all right ¿Qué información tienes que dar a la embajada extranjera cuando quieres visitar otro país? What's the response that I put? Well, para visitar otro país, tengo que informar a la embajada. I need to inform the embassy. ¿Cuánto tiempo voy a quedarme en el país? How much time I'm going to stay in the country? ¿Cuál es mi motivo de viajar? What is my motive for travel? ¿Y dónde me quedaré? Where I will stay. These are all details that you'd give to the embassy, right? To just, you know, so that you could get maybe a visa. Because especially for, you know, countries like the United States, you need to tell the embassies why you want to go to the country and they will decide whether or not they want to give you that visa. 
So think logically, don't freeze, right? And most importantly, make sure you have your vocabulary ready for the day because you might know what to say, but you can't say it in Spanish. So keep that in mind as well. All right. All right, everyone. So as I always say, mantengan la calma y aprueben el examen. Keep calm and pass the exam. You'll be fine so long as you're prepared. Thank you so much for watching this video. As usual, I ask that you like and share the video with your friends. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel because it helps. And if you'd like me to continue putting out content like this, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Muchas gracias y hasta la próxima.